Are you interested in a career in the agricultural field? The next generation of agricultural scientists will help farmers battle tougher weeds, handle extreme weather, and grow more to meet an ever-increasing global demand for food. Why should you consider ag science? Because there's an ever-increasing demand for food worldwide every day, and not enough professionals to go around. This is a field that's looking for a crop of new talent, and it could be you. Today, you're going to see four different fields of study. This includes their specialties, how they apply to the bigger picture, and what academics you'll need. Let's get started. Plant breeders start with a challenge and grow it into a solution. They do this by using conventional breeding techniques and cutting edge technology to create a seed that will produce a plant that can overcome stresses and adapt to a changing environment. Dr. Rusty Smith has been breeding plants for over 10 years. The thing that I enjoy most about my job is uh, being able to create a lot of diverse new plants. I'm a soybean breeder, so I'm creating lots of diverse plants. I like to go out and make the crosses and put the, the new families that I make out in the field under conditions uh, of stress or pressure and just see how they respond and then be able to select the best plants, the plants that I like. So I, I enjoy a lot of the art of plant breeding as, as well as the science. The work of a plant breeder happens in a lab or out in the field, but the resulting solutions they create benefit the entire world. An average day for me really depends uh, on the time of year. So this is uh, June, July, this is middle of the summer, so we're out here making crosses taking pollen from one parent and putting it on uh, the stigmas of another parent. However, in a month or two, we'll be in the middle of harvest. So we would start out early in the morning tagging plants and preparing to harvest, and then we would come out and actually cut the plants either directly with a, a combine or by hand with uh, sickles or lopping shears or something sharp. After harvest is over in the winter, you know, we go inside and we analyze our data and we decide uh, what's the best thing that we want to continue and plant the next spring. During the winter, we might attend meetings and work with colleagues on writing manuscripts or uh, things that we need to publish. Um, and so that's a fun thing about the job. It's not the same thing every day, all year long. The plant breeder studies all things plants and statistics. Common classes include plant biology, plant pathology, microbiology, plant breeding and genetics, and plant biochemistry. Job opportunities are wide open for every level of education. Uh, for undergraduates, there's probably a lot of good uh, technician positions with private industry and with universities. For a graduate degree, let's say a master's degree, a, a person might be a, an assistant plant breeder or a station manager or something like that. Uh, a person should get a PhD in plant breeding if they would like to be in charge of their own program. Those who enter the field with a farming background have an advantage. I would say that it would have been better if I'd had that background, but probably the most important thing for a plant breeder is to know the crop they're going to work with. So if you want to work on strawberries, you know, it's nice to know how to grow strawberries. If you want to work on soybeans, nice to know how they grow, how to grow them, how to harvest them, and so on. Plant breeding attracts those who are inventive and enjoy creating something new. That's what hooked Dr. Rusty Smith. It was for the creativity. Um, it was for the fun. I mean, uh, nobody gets into something totally uh, wanting to be so responsible and save the world, but you do it for fun, and uh, along the way, you might save the world. So I enjoy getting out there and deciding what I'm going to create and how I'm going to test it and how I'm going to select it and how I'm going to advance it. I like being in charge of my own breeding program. It's kind of like an artist who's painting a picture. You decide on the colors and where they're going to go and what combinations. But then on a more serious level, what you do is actually making a difference in a lot of lives of, of people around the world. You can produce food. You can create food that is better adapted to meet the, the conditions of global warming and stress that are going to happen in the future. So it, it can be very rewarding uh, as you help other people as well. Crop physiologists work to understand the processes that make a better plant. 
They also learn about the internal makeup of a plant that will allow it to produce more seed with less water or expensive inputs. Dr. Jeff Ray is a crop physiologist working for the USDA. In agriculture, plant physiology is primarily concerned with those plant processes that are associated with productivity, the production of an economic yield. Basically, plant physiologists try to understand why, why plants function the way they do. Uh, this often leads to questions of what are the limitations of plant production or crop production and how do we overcome those limitations. That's the fundamental aspects of crop physiology or physiology associated with crop production. Crop physiologists often work closely with plant breeders in the development of varieties with superior traits. One of the reasons that plant physiology is important is because it serves as a bridge between various disciplines, disciplines like agronomy or plant breeding or genetics and even molecular biology. What plant physiology tries to do is integrate the knowledge of those disciplines toward the goal of increasing or improving crop production. The crop physiologist studies all things plants and experimental design along with lab work. Class requirements include plant biology, plant pathology, cytogenetics, organic chemistry, and weed biology. There will be uh, classes in how plants interact at both the whole plant level as well as uh, at the cellular level how plants function. These things will include classes in plant physiology as well as biochemistry, uh, in some cases even mathematical modeling of uh, plant uh, processes. There really isn't a undergraduate degree in crop physiology. Uh, mostly you would have to get a master's degree or go on for a, a PhD. To fully realize the opportunities, yes, uh, I would highly recommend an advanced degree in plant physiology if you want to be a physiologist. The profession of crop physiology is vast and gives the prospective scientist a lot of specialties and job opportunities. Yes, with a degree in crop physiology, you can specialize in uh, anything from molecular biology, molecular genetics, all the way up to how whole fields uh, uh, function in a production system. I think there are a lot of job opportunities at the moment for a whole plant crop physiologist, someone that's working in the field and working on solving problems in the field. In the in industry, there is a demand for people with knowledge of how to work in the field, to set up experiments and interpret what they're getting from those experiments. There are a, uh, both field and laboratory opportunities in plant physiology because plant physiology covers the whole range from molecular biology, which is laboratory based, to whole plant physiology, which is going to be in the field or the community of a soybean field or other crops. And, uh, and oftentimes it's a mix of a range from laboratory to field and personally that's what I like about plant physiology is that it is a range of both laboratory and field work as well as greenhouse and growth chamber and other activities. You don't have to have a farming background to excel at crop physiology. A farm background is not required for uh, plant physiology, although you will have to learn, if you're working in agriculture, what it takes to produce a uh, crop, whatever crop you're working on. In our case, it's soybeans, but uh, physiologists work with all agricultural crops, and a fundamental understanding of the basics of crop production is important. The profession of crop physiology attracts people who are curious, persistent, and have a desire to figure things out. Probably the thing I enjoy most is the variation of what I do. Uh, I, it's from working at the computer to working in the field to working in the laboratory provides a, a lot of variation and you're not doing the same thing over and over and over. Bioinformatics experts grow row after row of data. This new, innovative field of work fuses biology, computer science, and information technology to accelerate innovation. Dr. Brian Scheffler works at the USDA ARS Research Facility in Stoneville, Mississippi. The basic concept of bioinformatics is biological data that you're analyzing, and we're talking large amounts of data. And the goal is 
not to understand one simple thing, but basically if you're talking about yourself, is how does your body work? And so now if you apply that to agricultural, to medicine or whatever, you're asking very similar things. You're asking whole questions. So how is the biology of something working? And so you get to ask questions. It's almost asking the question, why is the sky blue? Well, why do animals do certain things? Why do animals respond to certain things? You can now ask those questions and get answers. And that's what bioinformatics is the overall goal is to answer big questions. Bioinformatics scientists work closely with plant breeders and geneticists who generate the volumes of data that require complex statistical treatment. So in the field of bioinformatics, most people spend a lot more time in the laboratory because most of it's data analysis. However, if you, if you divide bioinformatics into its two major components, there are people that are more biologically orientated and people that are more computationally or computer oriented. And so the people that are on the biological side, they will do more biological research. They want to play with samples. They want to play with animals. They want to play with plants. And they want to do data analysis of that. And those people will be in the field. And other people may never leave their office and play with computers all day. And that's another advantage of bioinformatics. You get to do everything if you want. A bioinformatics scientist studies all things plants, experimental design, computer science, and lab work. Common classes include computer science and statistics, plant biology, ecology, plant breeding and genetics, and plant biochemistry. Bioinformatics is so broad in what you can do. There's a lot of different types of classes, a lot of different backgrounds you can come from of interest you can take. So obviously there's going to be biological classes, uh, computer classes, those are your main core of bioinformatics. But within there, there's a lot of different things you can do. People with artistic backgrounds even have a chance in bioinformatics. So because bioinformatics is so broad, the job opportunities are uh, very large. So uh, they go from academic aspects, so becoming professors or working in a lab with other people uh, government jobs uh, and industry. There's a lot of industry. There's not enough bioinformaticists out there. I can tell you if you graduate today and you're good at what you do, you have a job and you're gonna have a good paying job in bioinformatics. It's a growing industry without a doubt. Because the field is very open and diverse, prospective bioinformatics scientists have a lot of choice in their subjects of study and level of education. There's different levels you can work at. And so if you like playing with the computers on a daily basis, don't want to interact with a lot of people, you can do that with a bachelor's degree. You can do that with a PhD too. And so uh, there's advantages to both. And obviously if you go with a, a PhD, you're going to be paid more dollars. But the truth is, even with a bachelor's, you're going to get paid pretty darn well. Those who come into the field with a farming background are at an advantage. There is an advantage of having a farm background for bioinformatics. And, and the reason it's that is beneficial is you understand what the need is, a final product. Because one of the things you're trying to do is solve problems. You're trying to produce more food for the world is one of the big things of agriculture. And it's one of the byproducts of bioinformatics. Bioinformatics attracts people who are organized, determined, and self-motivated, like Dr. Brian Scheffler. I'm making an impact that's gonna go beyond my life, and I think that's what I really like, as I'm helping other scientists where we're solving problems that'll, that'll help the world, and that's what's cool. Agronomists spend a lot of time in the field rather than the laboratory. They're the test drivers of the ag science world because they take new varieties and technologies and find out how they perform in the field. Dr. Tom Eubank works for the Mississippi State Extension Service. Agronomy in general is the study of agriculture. Uh, it, it's what we describe the research and the academics evolved in trying to identify practices that promote uh, better crops, better production, uh, 
etc. Agronomists frequently conduct cooperative research with other specialists to determine the effectiveness of new plant varieties and production techniques in order to make farming more efficient and increase yields. There are a lot of opportunities for wherever your interest lies. If you like doing things in the lab, there are opportunities there looking at the different mechanisms within the plant, the, the soil fertility, how it influences plant growth, uh, the, the dynamics of photosynthesis and how we can improve that process in today's germplasms. So the lab is definitely an opportunity, but obviously it all ties back to the field. So we've got to still have people working in the field, putting these crops in the ground, bringing them to maturity and harvesting them because in the end, it's all about the yield. That's what matters the most to farmers. Agronomists study all things plants, soil, and the environment. Classes include ecology, soil chemistry, weed science, entomology, and meteorology. The curriculum predominantly within agronomy is obviously gonna evolve around agricultural type classwork. So plant science, the study of plants, soil science, which is the interactions that the plant have with the soil. Weed science, uh, which is what I primarily do, trying to control weeds in these various cropping systems. And then just crop production uh, classes as well. In academia, with an undergraduate degree, we typically start out most of those people with a research technician type role. And really it's something that we try to, to move them or mold them into a graduate student type program. A, a, Really, if you're gonna be successful in the academic arena or in the industry for that matter, um, an advanced degree, a master's degree, or even a PhD would be required. Job opportunities are wide open for those in the field of agronomy. Some of the more common jobs are chemical sales, working for farmers cooperatives, doing farm consulting, helping farmers make everyday decisions uh, on their cropping systems. And then also there are career opportunities within the major chemical companies and then of course academics as well. We're really experiencing a shortage in the number of graduates coming through agricultural programs ac across the country. So we really need more students involved in ag. Right now we're experiencing about a 90% uh, job rate where our students uh, basically have jobs when they uh, graduate college. No prior farming experience is needed to have a career in agronomy. I came from a farm family, uh, so it was never a question of what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be involved in agriculture, but it is definitely not a requirement that you be from a family farm or even from a community that has agriculture. Agronomists tend to enjoy working outdoors, are driven by discovery, and enjoy collaboration. I get a lot of enjoyment out of my role here as a research scientist in that I quite literally get to see the fruits of my labor. At the end of the season, we get to see all these dynamics applied to crops, but the yield, the fruit, is what we're really going for. So whether it's soybean or cotton or corn, there's a lot of opportunities there, but we all have a common goal there, and that's to help the producers of America because farming is the backbone of America and we enjoy some of the healthiest, most abundant food source in the world. So we want to see that continue and being involved in agriculture can make that happen. So there you have it, four possible career opportunities within agricultural science. If you would like to learn more, check with your local extension agent or go to msstate.edu. Someone has to be there to ensure that we feed the world. You can be that someone. Take care and keep learning.